In this video, we're going to take a look at two lightweight, trail-oriented full-face helmets. First, we're going to take a look at this Cali Invader helmet. Then after that, we're going to check out the IXS Trigger full-face helmet. Welcome back to the channel and welcome new viewers. This is Down to Ride MTB. I focus on a lot of things that have to do with mountain biking, usually towards the sort of the budget conscious biking options and accessories that are out there. It's not really the case with these full face helmets that we're gonna look at today because they're, I mean, they're just kind of in general expensive for a good one. All right, so the first helmet to take a look at is the Cali Protectives Invader. We'll open up the box. Uh, first thing you see when you open up the box is this neat little carrying bag, although, if I'm honest, I don't think anybody would use this little carrying bag to transport their helmet. Um, you're probably just going to throw it in the back of your truck or throw it on the passenger seat or whatever uh, without a bag. And even if you did use the bag, I think it would just you know, you go for a ride, get this thing all sweaty, stick it in this bag, and then you're just going to grow a bunch of funk inside the helmet. So I don't see any use for that thing, to be honest. Looking at the helmet, uh, you can see that there are just tons and tons of vents in this thing. It's very lightweight. It's definitely lighter than one of my two, uh, you know, kind of open face helmets. Um, so it does deliver for sure on the ventilation and on the weight. In this bag are a bunch of little additional padding pieces so that you can tailor the fit to your face as best as possible and to your head as best as possible. This is an extra small to medium. Uh, it's available extra small to medium as one kind of package and then there's the large to extra large. So this is meant to fit uh, 52 to 58 centimeter heads, which is a pretty big size range, all things considered. And that's why they have these different size pads for you to get what fits best to you. So the thinnest ones are inserted on the cheek here, and we'll get back to that later. There's some that are slightly thicker and then even thicker. Uh, same thing with the sort of back of the head neck padding. Strangely, the inserts that go on the top of the head, all three of them look and feel identical to me. So I'm not really sure how you're supposed to tailor the fit at the top of your head if you had a really small, if you were at the kind of the lower range of what this is supposed to fit. So having all these different size pads are all good and well uh, until you actually start going and changing them. So for these back of the neck, sort of back of the head paddings, um, as soon as you pull off the existing one, the two Velcro tabs that are supposed to be attached to the helmet to hold whatever one you put back in, come off with the padding. Uh, and that's pretty disappointing in a helmet that you spent over $200 on. I know you could fix it, you could just glue it back on or double-sided foamy tape this thing back on or something like that. Oh look, even one of the smaller ones, I guess that's intended to hold the upper portion of it, that came off too. So as I was saying, when you're spending over $200 on a helmet, you know, you don't expect to have to immediately fix something in it. Moving on now to the top of the head, um, what they have in here are these little blue inserts, and they're called an LDL. I think it's like a lower, low density layer. Um, it's kind of their answer to MIPS in a way. And it's kind of this rubbery compound with these circles, kind of like an octopus tentacles. And the idea is that if there's an impact with any twisting, these will allow the helmet to move around on your head a little bit. So it's a good concept, uh, but it's not executed very well, I don't think. Um, they stick out beyond the foam of the actual helmet, so when it's on your head, if you push down on it, you can feel right where those things are kind of pushing into your head. It's not very comfortable. I mean, it's, not, it's fine if you're just riding. If you're pushing on, it's not comfortable. If you were to have a wreck, I would imagine it would not be very comfortable either. In addition to that, you can see in the padding, uh, this may be a better example, anywhere that there's a slot in this is where one of those LDL layers sticks through. And you can see that here. Uh, however, there are two spots where it's just completely missing. And you can see even uh, you know, a recess in the foam where they should be, and they're not. And I guess that was a manufacturing oversight, or maybe they just decided they shouldn't be in that spot, but they never changed the foam mold. I'm not really sure, but it's, it's definitely strange uh, and also a little bit disappointing. All right, so moving on to the fit. Uh, like I said, this is to, to fit 52 millimeter to 58 millimeter heads. My head's about 57 centimeters in diameter, and it fits actually pretty good at the top. But that's kind of back to what I was saying. If you did have a smaller head at the top, I don't really know what you would do to get the top to fit well. The problem for me are the cheek pads. These are the thinnest of the ones that you get with it. 
and they're really pushing my cheeks in. I feel like as I'm talking right now, I'm eating the inside of my cheeks. Uh, and I actually contacted Cali to see if they had thinner options available. They do not. So for me, the fit is not really that great. Um, it's just not comfortable to have that amount of pressure on your cheeks all the time. The final little strange thing is the actual latch and the strap for the chin. So the latch is pretty cool. It's a little uh, magnetic latch. There you go, got that on. So that's nice and easy to take on and off. However, it sits really far back. You know, it's, not, it's kind of loose on me right now, but if I were to tighten it up to kind of how it should be, it's, you know, it's back here pushing on my Adam's apple. It's not up on my chin where you would really want it to be. And there is a little bit of a workaround for that, just popping off these cheek pads, relocating the strap farther forward, pop this thing back in, and then it's farther forward. How that would fare in a crash, I'm not really sure, you know, because if, if it's kind of just being held on with this cheek pad, is it going to get pulled back and pop that off and then still push up against your Adam's apple? Maybe, I'm not really sure. So between all these weird little issues that I've pointed out here, you know, this is just a lot of things that, that make this helmet not ideal for me. So it's going to be shipped back. Again, I don't think it's a terrible helmet. Uh, if it fit better, I think I would be able to deal with some of these other things a little, little more. Um, like I said, it is lightweight. It is very ventilated. It does deliver on those promises, but uh, it's just not going to work out for me. All right, now it's time to take a look at the IXS Trigger Full Face Helmet. This has been on back order for quite some time, uh, so it's been a while since I filmed that first part of the video. Uh, that's also probably evident by the longer hair, this awful attempt at growing some facial hair. That will be going away very soon, but you know, I thought it was kind of funny to, as a way to show the passing of time since that first video. But anyway, this thing's finally here, so let's take a look at it. Opening the box inside, Similar uh, fabric bag like we saw with the Cali Protectives helmet. And same with that one. I don't think there's any point to this thing. Like I said before, all it's going to do is trap in funk from when you're sweating. So, don't really need that. First look at the helmet. Well, you'll see a lot less things come out of the inside of it. So you've basically got one other size cheek pads and then the ones that come inside of it. Now sticking with the padding, uh, we'll look at the top of the helmet. The top of the helmet is just kind of a one size fits all. There are not different uh, pieces to go in there. Although actually when I think about it with that Cali one, there are extra pieces but they all felt the same. So anyway, uh, one size fits all up here. These actually feel a lot more cushiony, a lot more plush in comparison. Uh, there are no little inserts like LDL layers. No MIPS, none of that stuff, so pretty simple as far as that goes. There's also no extra padding for this, you know, lower back head kind of neck area to try to adjust the fit, because instead what you get is one of these clicking adjustment dials, which you see on basically every open face helmet that's out there, so that's pretty cool. So just picking it up, it feels every bit as light as that Cali helmet. Um, I'm sure there's probably some little discrepancy in weight between the two, and I'm really not sure which one is heavier, but they feel so close to me, I don't think it's anything you're going to notice on the trail. One thing you may notice, however, though, you'll see that it has a lot of vents just like that other one, but the difference is that these vent holes are a lot smaller. So that could mean that it's going to be a little bit hotter on the trail, and that really also depends a little bit on the air channeling on the inside and how well that works. Keep in mind, though, that that's a two-way street. You know, the bigger that these holes are, and that, that Cali helmet, those holes were really, really big. Um, but the bigger they are, the more chance of when you fall, something gets lodged in there and hits your head instead of hitting the helmet. It could be a stick, could be a small rock, uh, could be your, the end of your handlebars, I don't know. Another similarity on these helmets is the chin strap. This is also a little magnetic latch, which is kind of cool. Dangling from that, you will see some extra little adhesive dots to go on. I guess if the ones that are on there fall out, you have extras to put on, so that's cool. Little instruction book, and then the tag. Uh, on the tag of this one, it's a small to medium, and that means that it's intended to fit a 54 to 58 centimeter head. That's a smaller range than the other helmet, and probably to my benefit, uh, because I'm at about a 57, 58. So if it's not meant to fit those really small heads, then it's a better chance it's going to fit my head well. So let's go ahead and find out. <clears throat> so the very first thing that I noticed putting this on is the difference in the cheek pads. These are positioned a lot farther back on the jaw, 
and that's actually a good thing. The other one, the pads were kind of farther forward. That's where I was saying I feel like I'm like eating the inside of my mouth because they're pushing my cheek in as my mouth opens and closes. Well, this is farther back, but that's not the case. Possible downside to that, I guess if you were to hit the ground at just the right position, you could push the front of this, this chin bar into your chin because the, you know, the padding is farther back. So it's one thing to keep in mind, probably unlikely. As for the fit at the top, it fits actually really well, pretty comfortable. If I push down on it from any direction, I don't feel those pressure points. And then of course, as I showed just a second ago, you've got the dial adjustment to get the fit in the back and that works just like it should. So overall, I'm pretty happy with this IXS Trigger full face helmet. I'm definitely gonna be keeping it and using it. If I'm being nitpicky, I do kind of wish that these vent holes were a little bit larger. That was the main thing that attracted me to the Cali Invader helmet in the first place was how big those ventilation holes were. You know, not to down that Cali helmet too much or that company at all, it just didn't really fit me quite right. And they do have some really cool stuff going for them too. So they have crash replacements on all their helmets. Uh, if you crash and you mess up the helmet, they'll send you a new one. And I think if you crash that one, they'll send you another new one. So if you buy a Cali helmet, it's kind of like, you pay once and then you've got a nice helmet for your lifetime. And I don't think IXS offers anything like that. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that they do. So that's basically gonna wrap up this video. I'm gonna use this thing for sure. I'm gonna get some trail rides in on it. Ironically, um, the weather is actually cooling down now. Uh, so I'm not gonna kinda know how ventilated it feels on days when it's 95 degrees out there. Uh, but I'm gonna wear it regardless. I've been wearing my older full face helmet, which, let me go grab that thing right now. <clears throat> yeah, so this is the helmet that I had been wearing for a good part of the summer since I wrecked and messed up my face, um, just because I wanted that extra protection. And this is like, you know, this was like the cheapest full face helmet I could find. I really got it initially because I wanted to use the chin bar to film with, uh, but then I started wearing it for extra protection. But it's way heavier. It has a fraction of the amount of ventilation holes. So anything's got to be better than this. So as always, thank you guys for watching. I will report back if I find anything negative about this helmet or even if I just wear it and I feel like it's absolutely the best helmet in the world. You know, I'll, I'll let you know in a follow up video at some point. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave some comments below. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time.